did have some graduates here. So, Alyssa, I would ask for you to come on up. <laughs> Alyssa just graduated from, uh, from Lincoln County High School, and I'll just tell you this about, uh, yes, I want you to come up here. I'll tell you this, Alyssa is a strong and independent woman, which is going to serve her well as she goes off into college, and as it's, as it's going to serve her well to stand in the faith. As she, you know, as we, when you go out to college, sometimes you're faced with the world, and uh, you're not having the support of uh, your local church, who she's known to uh, grow and even love, even me, right? You, she thinks, she thinks. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's going to serve her well. But uh, just a little token of our support for you, and thank you so much, and uh, congratulations. Take care. She'll be going to Trevecca Nazarene University in Nashville, where she'll be studying uh, education with an emphasis on English. All right. And then we also have Shel uh, Shelby Deshawn. Come on up. If you think about it, Shelby has had quite an accomplishment. Uh, she has actually graduated college, had full load. She's uh, had uh, been a mom, uh, been also a wife of a husband. That's me, you, right? Yes. <laughs> Worked a job, and now she's uh, finished her uh, degree in education. Is soon to be starting a job, hopefully this fall. Has that been determined yet? Not, yet? Not determined. But she just graduated from the University of Cumberland. So, on behalf of the Church of Nazarene, congratulations. Amen great day, isn't it? Great day to serve the Lord. Stand with me and let's sing about He Lives this morning. Aren't you glad that we don't serve a dead Savior? That's what makes us different than all the rest of the religions. Our Savior lives. Amen. He's not dead. No matter what the news might say. <laughs> Serve a risen Savior. 
got a relationship that's better than an argument you can't argue with somebody about something but you can sure tell them about your relationship he lives within my heart I've come to know more about Jesus today how about you that's what I came for I want to hear messages about Jesus I want to hear songs about Jesus I want to hear testimonies about Jesus I want to know more about Jesus. That's what we're going to sing about right now. Tell me more and more about Jesus.
did you come out for this morning? Did you come out to be seen? Did you come out to see? Or did you come out to find out really who Jesus is? More about him. I, I promise you this, every time you open up the word, you'll learn more. He'll reveal himself to you. This morning, if you would, all that would just gather in around the altar. I know we have a lot of needs. Uh, a, a lot of things that we need to pray about and praise the Lord as we just talked about we serve a living Savior and so we're just going to reach out to him today trusting him for what he wants to do in our midst so Lord Jesus today as we are here we thank you Lord for this opportunity Lord, we, we come to gather in your house, to gather in your name. No name given under heaven. Lord, thank you for that. Yours is the greatest name, the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, right now, right now, there are needs that are represented here at the altar. There are needs that are represented in the pew. And so what we ask, Lord, would you begin to touch? Would you begin to move? Would you begin to stir, Lord Jesus, I pray? Lord, we realize of the physical needs that need to take place of, of a touch, of a work. And so, Lord, we trust you in these things. So, Lord, I ask, would you begin to move? Would you begin to reveal yourself in these situations? Lord, I, I pray where it seems like there is no way in the sense of a healing taking place. Lord, may you break through like never before. And, Lord, may your name be proclaimed above everything else that is taking place. And so, Lord, I, I pray, would, 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 would we, as the body of Christ, be able to be part of that, Lord? I, I believe that you can heal right in the midst of who we are right now. And, Lord, when you do that, may it not be said anything about this church, may it not be said anything about the people, but may everything be said about you and who you are. And so, Jesus, we thank you for these things. Lord, we, we come in. We come into the sanctuary this morning and we realize that the news that we see on TV, the news we read in the paper that we see on our phone, Lord, it, it is inundated with the worst of the worst. And if we're not careful, we will make our way into the sanctuary believing that there's only worse, not realizing that we have entered into the house of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so I pray to Heavenly Father, would you touch our nation? And our nation is in a mess, and it, it, it's of our own doing. It, it's because that we have turned. It's because that we have not sought the face of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I pray that today would today be the day that our nation is transformed, Lord Jesus, more into your image from, from the east coast to the west coast, all the way from north to south. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, make a move in our midst today. And so we thank you for what you're going to do. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just continue to help us today right here in Lancaster, Lord. May we not miss what you're wanting to do with us. I pray, Lord Jesus, right now in the pews, there are people that are bound by chains. They can't even move this morning. They're bound by chains. They're going to move here in a little bit, and they're going to try to get out the door. But, Lord, I pray they can't move. I, I pray, Lord, they're stationary until they allow you to take off the chains that have them bound. Lord, may they be able to find freedom in your name today. And so, Lord, we trust you for these things. I pray, Lord, would you just continue to bless our time that we have together here today. Lord, may we not take this for granted. Lord, I don't know how much longer we have to have this freedom to worship openly. But Lord Jesus, while we have this opportunity, may we say we're going to take every chance we have of the opportunity to proclaim the name of Jesus openly and publicly with other believers. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. 
Lord, would you help us today? We need a touch from you, Lord. And so I pray, Lord, that you just continue to watch over us. We love you and we praise you in all things, in all times, in all circumstances, in the good and the bad. You are still God. May we truly be a people that can speak just like Job. Are we only to receive good and not bad? Lord, may we be a people that we can walk throughout this world and even when we're struggling, when we be able to look at people and say, I realize that right now there may be some things happening that I may not be happy with, but I trust the Savior that I serve that he's going to see me through. And so, Lord, we thank you for these things. Lord, I pray, continue to watch over your people. We give you praise, glory, and honor because you and you alone are worthy of it. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Well, I hope you guys are anchored in Jesus. Because what we're going to be singing, and I'm going to be singing about, and you guys join in, of course, please, uh, is about something that only those that are anchored in Jesus are going to inherit. And that's heaven. Oftentimes, I think about what's going to heaven is going to be like. And uh, I like to think about this picture. I asked them to see if they could put this picture up for me. This is what I imagine heaven would be like when I come into the presence of the king when I think about what he saved me from how could I not just go run up into his arms and just wrap my arms around his neck and say I'm home how could I not do that but there's probably only one thing that would stop me and that's his holiness his holiness would stop me in his tracks and it would demand me to worship but here's the thing people his holiness is the same now, and it demands worship. And we're here, we're going to worship. This song I've never sung before. I haven't even gone through it by myself all the way through. I've sang it at the radio, I don't know, a million times, as most of you guys have. I didn't know what song to sing. This is a song that just popped in my mind just about a week ago. There's two songs that came to mind, and one didn't even have music, so I was like, oh, it's got to be this one. But I never had confirmation of it. And I was talking to Samantha, she's like, you know what you're saying? I was like, well, I have an idea, but I'm not certain. This is on the way here. You know, sister? But right before we got out of the car, right before we got out of the car, he answered my prayer, gave me confirmation. He is on time, and he is faithful, and I praise his name.
I can only imagine what it'd be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you Jesus, or in all of you be still, will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself Standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all of you be still. Will I sin? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing? Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. When all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Well, it is good to be back with you behind the pulpit. And so uh, thank you for your prayers. I still can't get as loud as what I normally would, uh, but the Lord will help us, right, take care of us, so man, he has been faithful, uh, my wife asked me, am I, am I nervous, <laughs> I always get nervous, you're preaching the word of God, right, you always get nervous in that sense, not nervous about my voice, not nervous about any of that, uh, I'm actually, I'm always excited. Uh, for the opportunity so I never say I have to preach I get to preach <laughs> I, I don't like when I don't get to preach because you don't like doing what you know the Lord has called you to if you don't get to do it oh boy man that shit just ran through everywhere some of y'all are like oh, I don't understand that's reason you need to get a hold of it you need to find out what the Lord's called you to and I promise you you won't quit until the day you die doing it 
And you'll be excited about it every day you get up. I've got a sign in my office. You know what it says, Judy? Today I'm excited about everything. Proverbs chapter 18 is where we'll be at today. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. After you found that, if you would, stand out of reverence of God's word. Proverbs chapter 18. We'll have one verse today, verse 14. Verse 14, the word of the Lord says this as Solomon speaks. A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? Lord, I, I pray would you just help us today? Well, your word's powerful. It's sharp. Your word is for our benefit. It's for our benefit when we're rebuked, and it's for our benefit when we're encouraged. And so, Lord, today I pray, may your sword fall where it will, because we trust you. So, Lord, I pray you help me, help my voice. Lord, you brought me this far. I know you're going to continue to take me, and I thank you for that. And so, Lord, you just continue to be with us. Lord, I do pray, help me not to put anybody to sleep. I can't get real loud today. So, Lord, you help me in that. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We ask it in the precious name of Jesus. We all say it together. Amen. 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 Person beside of you does go to sleep. Give them a good elbow. Probably the last time they do it. <clears throat> the story is told of a woman who was bitten by mad dog that had rabies then looked as if she was going to die and so she went to the doctor and as she was there the doctor began to check her out and he said I'm, I'm sorry he said but the, the main thing that you need to do right now is, is you need to make out a will he said it, it don't look good and so you, you just need to do that and so she grabbed immediately a pen and paper and she started writing and she wrote and she wrote and she wrote and after a few minutes the doctor was kind of taken back and he, he said ma'am that's that's a long will that you're writing and she said will nothing she said I'm putting names on this paper of people I'm going to bite <laughs> uh, oh me oh boy <laughs> Sickness will do crazy things to you. Be careful, lest you don't think straight. Uh, <clears throat> Solomon speaks this proverb out, and uh, I want to preach a message that's just going to be entitled this, How You Holding Up. How You Holding Up. Because a lot of you are going to look at me and say you're doing good, and my spirit with inside of me is looking at some of you all this morning. Hmm. Verse 14, Solomon says this, a man's spirit will endure sickness. So let's think about this for a little bit. We read Proverbs sometimes, and man, it just seems so just right on, right? Right on. Other times Solomon speaks some things and man it makes your head hurt in the way that he says it. And you want to try to figure out, man, what was what was God speaking through this man that wants us to really hear? And so I've been wrestling with this one for a while and felt like uh, the Lord wanted me to preach coming back. And so a man's spirit will endure sickness. I don't know how long we'll preach today, it just all depends. Uh, number one, what the Lord leads. And then number two, if I get shut off. I don't know. It just doctor told me if it starts hurting, you got to quit. So so we look at this man in the sense a man's spirit. Now, now I realize it's not just going to be for the sense of uh, alpha male, right? 
So, so we're talking about man, and he would use this word uh, talking of humanity in general, right? We, we get all tore up because we're like, well, it said man and not woman. It said this. And then, and quit, quit trying to make everything. In a sense, you, you, right? We sound more political than we do spiritual, right? So it, we, we get in this part, and it, and it says that a man's spirit will endure sickness. And so we, we see this sense of humanity as he really brings in everybody, right? Sin came into this world because of two people. And now because of those two people, sickness entered in as well. Sickness not in, only entered into man, the scripture said. Sickness entered into the ground. The ground's cursed, scripture tells us in Genesis because of it. And as he talks about this humanity, he says really in this sense, humanity's spirit will endure sickness. This enduring of sickness, this really trying to push through. The, this word spirit that we have here is a ruach. And so you, you will go through there and, and a, a times going into the Hebrew words and you see this and ruach deals with the Holy Spirit right the whole, in the old testament it, right, holy spirit has always been right always been if you here wednesday night we talked a little bit about that but but uh, this word ruach this spirit in hebrew but also i want you to realize he's not talking about the holy spirit here right he's talking about the spirit of man he's talking about in in humanity the things that are here and and so as it as it talks about the wind and the breath as well. Ruach in Hebrew, man, it's just a wide general sense. And so you, you really got to take into account the way that the writer would say this or write this and how God would want to be. It, it, it's re it could also be the spirit of a living being, right? So it's just the spirit. But here Solomon uses it in a different way. It, it's in the sense of animation. And so if you say, well, what an animation? Animation means this, a, a, a life that is full. Now think about it. How many of y'all got a full life? Now, I, I'm not talking about busy life. I'm talking about a full life. We most of the time don't get God enough credit for how full our life is. Yeah, so. He also speaks about it. He uses this word spirit in the sense of vigor. Right? Vigor. You, you read through the Old Testament, you'll see that word come up, especially in the King James, right? That word vigor is going to be used quite a bit. That word vigor deals with the physical strength, right? So now we see how Solomon begins to bring this in. He talks about humanity's spirit will endure sickness. Humanity's vigor, right? Hum humanity's animation that, that was to come in man, will endure this type of sickness. Now, watch this. I, I really want to make a... a a difference here in the sense of what we're going to talk about because right now you cannot distinguish between the saved and the unsaved when I'm talking about this type of spirit and I can promise you there's some people watch it there's some people that are getting ready to split hell wide open they can have their arm cut off and they'll still bear through it right I've stood beside some on bedside and didn't make it to heaven but they were enduring some sickness, right? So we, we look at this. I want you to realize what we're talking about here and, and this part of it. We've all seen people that have gotten sick, and as they press through, right, we're able to see that they're able to make it. They, they, they fight, and what, what is inside of them is, is becoming out, right? So our spirit, God created us, man. It is, we are so intricately woven on the inside. Do you realize that? We, we are so intricately woven on the inside that what? That if there was to be a pain in your hand, it notifies your brain not to use it. Right? That's how, it, see, why did, you know why he did that? He knew we weren't smart enough <laughs> to figure it out. Because what happens? When we break our leg, most people try to get up. Oh, I just got to get up. You know? And you know what your leg is saying? I'm broke. <laughs> See, he had to create us this way because we're not smart enough to figure these things out sometimes 
Uh, you see, it, it's really not uncommon to humanity to be in this mindset, to be in this frame. Because really, you know what they would tell you in the world? You know what it is? You're in a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You, if you don't push your way to the top, you're never going to make it. You've got to be top of the class. You've got to be the head. You've got to be the best at your work. You've got to do it. And you know what you do? You not only will cut off your arm, you'll cut off somebody else's if it means you can get there. Why? Because there's something about the spirit, the way we were created. As much as people want to say that they're not competitive, you're created competitive. It just may not be in sports. It may not be in something else. But I promise there's something that you're competitive in. And without the Lord, watch you, you'll take somebody out. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only one that's ever been there. But I mean, I'm just saying. You know. I mean, sport. I mean, I'm, I'm, anybody remember Tiddlywinks? That little game you said? You remember that? Man, I'll take you down. You Tiddlywinks, right? That's something coming up within this, right? We were created. Oh, me. <clears throat> so as we see this sense of humanity, of people that know Jesus and don't know Jesus, that we're all created, right, in the image. We're, we're created in this sense. And so as we see this, we are so intricately woven that it comes together that we all have this desire, right? Especially, now I do, when it comes to sickness, I don't know, and I say this, I don't know too many people that like being sick. Now, I, the people that I met that like being sick are really not sick. <laughs> huh? You know what I'm talking about? You know, you ever met the person that always wants something wrong with them? You know why? Because there's nothing wrong. <laughs> They're trying to figure out something that is. But I promise you, the person that really gets sick don't want to stay sick. I have never met anybody walking around just says, no, I just want to keep all this sickness inside me. It just feels, I love putting my head in the toilet and throwing up. Oh, it's just so great. Nobody says those type of things. You just don't. Why? Because we're created different than that. We have a spirit that says, fight through it. Keep going. Right? What? That's not bad things. And so it says here, even Solomon realized that a man's spirit will endure this sickness. But then all of a sudden we see him switch something up here. And when he says this next part, it would almost seem the same. You know what? Really, he only switches up one word. But it, it would almost seem like it's the same, but I probably, it's completely different. Solomon now brings it back around to where we're really going to understand what he's saying here. And so when he gets to this second part of verse 14, and he says, But a crushed spirit, who can bear? Now think about it. But a crushed spirit, who can bear? Now what? I'm still talking about the same spirit, and so is he. Spirit didn't change. Spirit's still the same word, used in the same way, used in the way it was in the first part of this. So we still got the same thing going on here. But watch what he does. He says, but a crushed spirit who can bear. It's going to read different in, in different translations. And so some would, would use the word wounded. Uh, some would use the word smitten. Some would use the word broken. Some would use the word afflicted. And those are all correct, right? It's all the same word in the Hebrew. And so when we get to this word crushed, when we look at this, a, a wounded, have you ever thought about it? You start putting different words in here, and we think about a wounded spirit who can bear. Right? When it, now what? He begins to make a distinction between a sickness and a crushing of things that are happening. See, Satan's job is to make you think that you're crushed. Satan's job is to make you think that you're wounded, that you've been smitten. His job is to make you believe that you can never get past that place. He wants you to believe you always have to walk that way. That there will never be any relief. That there will never be any help. That God will not be able to do what his word promises that he would do. 
And so all of a sudden we see this, and man, Solomon must have knew a little bit about this. And he must have been able to look around and so how's that? He must have been able to look around and see that other people struggled just as well with this crushed spirit. And so I want to talk about that mainly this morning because really I still want to know how you're holding up. So if I were to tell you this, it's not going to be anything new to most of you all sitting in here. But over the past year, it's been a hard year for this church. Now, I'm not just talking about people passing away, things like that. I'm talking about it's been a hard year. There's not too many people sitting in this room that ain't been affected. That you hadn't went to bed some nights probably crying because it's been tough so right now real quick let me sum some things up for you I don't have the answer to why our church is going through some things but I do have the answer that God will see us through right God will see us through God will see us through but a crushed spirit who can bear the afflicted spirit who can bear and so we see that there is this vast difference in a sickness than in our human spirit who can and in our human spirit who can endure a crushed spirit. What is, we can endure some sickness. I promise we can get through some sickness. Sometimes, no matter how bad it may be, we can get through some sickness. Solomon brings out this crushed spirit. You see, I've I've seen people that have had a crushed spirit. I don't know if you've ever met anybody like that, but I promise you, a crushed spirit is is. Man, it's hard to be around someone like that. Crushed spirit is it's not something that you want to see all the time. See, that crushed spirit is when the doctor says there's nothing else we can do. Hmm. When the doctor says you have to make a choice. I've watched the one with sickness and the one without the sickness also crushed in spirit. Now watch this. See, we only talk about sickness and we believe that's the way it's going to be. But I promise you, it's not so. I've seen people have a crushed spirit that's never been sick. No physical ailments. Nothing wrong with them, but it's the same look. The doctor might as well have said it. <laughs> might have had to make... A choice I really want to get into how do we handle a crushed spirit because this morning uh, some of y'all got crushed well you wouldn't admit it but did you realize the difference in admittance and just looking people what did, we can try to put on that mask but I promise what's inside of you comes out what's inside of me comes out you can't hide it you can't hide it. Why? Because we're not made to be hidden. Now, wait a minute. You say, what are you talking about? Adam and Eve tried it. We are not made to be hidden. Mm -mm. Made to be seen. Because you cannot show the goodness of God hid. Got to be seen. In all reality, the health and the strength and the determination is not will what defeat a spirit that is on the verge of being crushed. Satan would have us to believe that physical sickness with no cure and no help and no hope is the crushing of the spirit. Now what? It can do that, but that's not the only thing that will crush it's not the only thing that will cause this pain. You see, really in the sense of it, now listen to me, because there ain't nobody in here that hadn't dealt with some physical sickness before. Some of your families dealt with physical sickness before. You, you understand these things that I'm talking about. But I want you to realize as well, this is just Satan's misdirection of the greater thing. Right? Satan longs for you to be so distracted by the physical that you miss the spiritual. Now, I, and if you miss the spiritual, it's a lot easier for Satan to crush. 
And it's a lot easier to get under the weight of the world when we don't see the spiritual. So Satan's misdirection is always to look at that. It's always to focus upon that part. Satan realizes that if he can get one to stay focused on this physical sickness that maybe has no help and no cure or no hope, then he has done his job in being able to blind one from seeing the bigger picture. You see, too many times we don't want to see the bigger picture because we're happy with the picture we see. And if you're happy with the picture you see, you'll never understand. I can only imagine. Right? Because if you're so focused on this, I promise you, you'll miss that. <clears throat> uh, okay. Can you, uh, it's all right. Lord, you help me. Still hear me okay? Everything good? Good, good, good. Wouldn't didn't answer you elbow them. <laughs> they didn't answer. You see, the greatest crushed spirit, understand this, the greatest crushed spirit is not physical. You see, the greatest crushed spirit comes from one eventually realizing that sin is the greatest problem in their life. Now watch this. Watch this. And all will come to that place. All with it. There is not a single person that will not come to that. It will come to that. As humanity, we come to that place because the Holy Spirit's job, the reason it was sent, Scripture says Jesus speaking was to convict the world of sin. And so as the Holy Spirit comes in, watch this. I promise you, you remember that first time that you were convicted? It felt like you were being crushed. Now watch this. God's what is God's remedy is not to crush us. Hey, right, watch, watch. You say, well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this. God's remedy is only to reveal what we need so that we're not crushed. Satan's job is to make you believe that if watch this, if you give in to what the Spirit's saying, then you'll be crushed. Right? Right? Because Satan wants us to believe that it's because we're weak the reason we need him. Right? The thing about it is this. Satan's always been good at twisting words. Oh, did God really say? Did God really say? I promise you, you need Jesus. We are weak. We are frail. We are vessels that are easily broken. All of a sudden, we see this part. I have witnessed more from sin sickness being able to crush the spirit more than any physical thing that I have ever watched people go through. <clears throat> I had a family member that got ran over by a bush hog, cut his leg off, and he was still awake in that whole time. Now, watch this. Remember, I told you God created us in such a way that the worst of the worst moment, watch this, God has made us. Now what? That all of a sudden, our body shuts off from pain and we go to where we don't feel anything. Now I did. That's not humanity that does that. God created us that way because he realized there's going to be some pain you cannot handle in the flesh. And so he got his leg cut off in that sense. And he was awake enough that he had to tell his son, his grandson, to go run back and get his wife. And they, they flew him out, did all this. He was in a coma. And they tried to wake him up. Tried to wake him up. And the physical pain was so bad, even with all the medication, that all he did was woke up and he was screaming constantly to where they would just have to knock him out again. Because of the physical pain. Let me tell you a little bit about that. He would say that while he was knocked out in that time, not a way God dealt with him. 
God would speak into his life. Now watch this. <clears throat> These are the words that he would say. He said, God spoke to him at that time and said, preach or die. Now what? I wonder which one hurt more. I wonder which one was really crushing. Think physical pain's bad? Wait till the Lord deals with you and says, you've got to make a choice. And all of a sudden, the spirit begins to move. And I promise you, you feel like you're being crushed. Now why? Not of his making, not of his doing, of our own. Because he's trying to make a way out. See, if we, if we give in to what the Spirit wants to do, He pulls us out from under the crush. And we're not completely destroyed. As much willpower as one has to live in the physical. I, have you ever met those type of people? Have you met people that had that willpower that was just like, man, they fight through everything because they're going to live. Man. It, it blows my mind. Some people that really can't walk, and yet they're like, I am determined. I'm going to do enough physical therapy that I'm going to. I've watched people do that. And, man, it was pain that they had to go through to get to the place to where they could take that step again. Yet they were willing to go through it. As much willpower as one has to live in the physical, one cannot will themselves alone spiritually. say that again as much as the one thinks that they can will themselves to walk if they try hard enough I promise you alone we cannot spiritually get ourselves to where we need to be there is no picking ourselves up by the bootstraps there is none of that that we can do our Paul would say our righteousness our own right is as filthy rags it's not what we can do it's everything he can do we see the spiritual sense the burden of sin, I promise you, is too great. Now watch this. You, uh, well, Pastor, <clears throat> talk a little bit more about that. Well, for the one who's not saved, the burden of sin this morning, just sitting in this sanctuary, you feel crushed. Oh, you feel like it's coming down hard on you. Because well, you don't understand the saving grace. Right? Saving grace. You haven't got there. Saving grace, which means you're not going to be crushed. You're going to be saved. Right? Say, but all of a sudden you're like, whoo, whoo. I've, I've had people, what, I've had people say, I just can't come to church. I just have anxiety attacks. I have panic attacks. Yeah, yeah, conviction. <laughs> conviction will lead you to going crazy. No, I didn't. It will lead you to go crazy. And you'll blame everything else except for yourself. Yeah. And ta I promise you, take all the medication you want to. I have dealt with people that tried every pill there was. Man, I worked in the pharmacy for 10 years. There ain't no drugs. You can't tell me. I can probably tell you what it is. Some of y'all are more nervous than ever. Because you're like, I ain't telling you what I'm on. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the thing is this. It can't mask conviction. I don't care how zoned out you want to be. I promise you, when the spirit moves, there ain't no pill strong enough to stop it. Oh, me. Leaving church ain't going to help you either. It won't help you. Run as far as you want to. You ain't getting away from it. You ain't getting away from it. <clears throat> we realize that the burden of sin is too great because all we'd have to do is look through the Scripture in the Old Testament and the New. Now watch this. <laughs> Listen to me, one that is called out on the name of Jesus that has been saved, the saving grace. Allow sin to come back into your life and tell me that you don't feel crushed. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Psalm 51. David. Man. David, after the sin with Bathsheba. You know what he felt? Crushing. Now watch it. Why did he feel crushing? Because of sin. Yeah, why did he feel that it was sin? Because of the Holy Spirit. 
Why did he feel all that? Because he says, I need you to repent so that I can get you out of this. That's how we really, like, that's how you really, that's the reason when you do something wrong after you've been saved, you feel bad. You ain't getting out of that neither. <laughs> he makes the way out. Can't do it on our own. He makes the way out for these things. Paul couldn't do it either. Paul said when he came to the realization of who Jesus was, man, it crushed him. He thought he was doing things in the name of God for the right reason, but when he revealed himself on that road, it crushed him. And he, what did Jesus was the only saving grace Paul got. Didn't do anything on his own. Everything about who he is. In case you might have thought that this sense of a crushed spirit is only for the one that is lost, as I was talking about earlier, we've got to bring our attention to the one that's saved in the sense of the follower of Jesus Christ will have this thing called temptation. So just real quick, you got tempted this week? See, why did... You know, most people are scared to death to say yes. Now watch it. Watch it. If you hadn't been tempted, I'm going to question some things on you. Now, because if you're walking with Jesus, Satan's trying to get you away from that. Now what? I just think it's been a long time since I've been tempted. Uh, red flags should be going off everywhere. <laughs> Some of y'all are just like. <laughs> <laughs> Try to ignore it all you want to. You're crushed. You're crushed. Some of y'all are so nervous because I'm preaching again. You know? Oh. He's different than much. He just calls things out. Now you can't handle that because you're crushed. If you allow God to give you some freedom, you ain't worried about what I preach because you know it's coming from Him. And you say, man, there's freedom found in the Word. Oh, baby. You'll be all right. Yeah. You see, we're, we're tempted in different ways. You realize that? Not everybody's the same tempted in different ways and if we're not careful that temptation can crush the spirit now watch this you say what temptation can crush the spirit you better believe it can I didn't say just sin I said even the temptation now why did you say pastor I just don't know well we're going to get there <laughs> we're going to get there because I promise you, there ain't nobody in this room ain't been tempted this way. You've been tempted, or you ain't walking with Jesus. You've been tempted. He's tried to destroy you. He's tried to steal you. He's tried to kill you. Because John 10, 10, Jesus says that's his job. Is Satan will try to do those three things. It's never changed. That's always been his game plan. And the more you walk with Jesus, the more he tries to kill. Because he's trying to destroy your influence in the name of Jesus. All right, so now, <clears throat> some are tempted to commit sinful acts, while others are tempted to give up on the thing that we call Christianity. Now watch this real quick. You say, what? what? No, I'm saying this. Some people are tempted to commit adultery. Some people are tempted to kill. Some people are tempted to steal. Those temptations will never go away for some people in the sense of you're tempted. Now, get to this other part. Some people are tempted to walk away from the gospel. Hey, that church did me wrong. That pastor, that Sunday school teacher, man, that that person sitting over there, that is, you know what it is? Temptation to walk away. You didn't think about killing them. I hope you didn't think about killing me. <laughs> you didn't think about any of those things. But the temptation comes in this, just quit going. I mean, really, what's the church done for you anyway? And then what happens is this, well, 
And if the church really did anything, did God really do anything? Because the church says they're supposed to be in God's name, right? Jesus. All of a sudden, this temptation comes and says this, just give up. Just give up. I'm going to give you a few more examples here in just a little bit of that sense because most people think that they're not on the verge of that. But I've met, I promise you, I've met a lot of people that are on the verge of quitting. Quitting Christianity. Too hard. Too much requirement. Things are not always easy. And so we're tempted to give in. You see, if it, <clears throat> we've heard things like this. Are you ready? Temptation. You get it all confused because you'll hear people say something like this. Well, if it ran across your mind, you might as well do it anyway. It's already there. Wrong. Wrong. Not in Scripture. Contrary to Scripture. Quit telling people to sin to make yourself feel better. Stop. So you say, Pastor, can you prove that? Absolutely. Jesus tempted by Satan in the desert three times. I promise you, watch this. The only way that he realized that it was temptation is through he heard, which dealt with the mind, which means it ran across, which means this, because if none of that took place, Jesus did not have to rebuke what he didn't hear. Right? Right? So watch this. Quit and lie. Watch it. If you've said that to somebody, you're a liar. So quit lying to people that if it run across your mind, you might as well do it. Why do you, no wonder our children are messed up today. Ran across your mind, you might as well do it. No wonder our schools are messed up today. We've taught our children things that are unbiblical. So now we, you messed up. You thought about it. Do it. No, can't have that. So here we get to this point. Are you ready to quit? Ready to give up? Here's how you're going to be tempted. Your spouse ain't saved yet. Why are you even praying? You say, I don't know if that's a temptation or not. Oh, yeah, it's a temptation. You go and sit with somebody that their spouse ain't saved. And you watch it. You watch the burden that they care for them. But I promise you, you get deep enough and you'll see also that they're tempted that Satan says it ain't worked yet. Why are you still praying? Won't you just stop? What about the child that's not saved yet? Been praying for your kid. Satan comes in and says, it ain't worked yet. Why are you still praying? What you? Didn't he didn't tempt you to do sinful things in the way of breaking Ten Commandments. But he did tempt you to say, just stop. Just stop. Can I tell you what's happening? Watch this. Temptation can crush your spirit. Can we even go a little bit further? about that grandchild you're praying for they ain't saved yet actually the more you pray the worse it gets and Satan says why are you even praying if you quit praying it may get a little bit better I watch, I watch you. people are tempted in that way Satan is good at deception Satan's good at temptation Satan's good at trying to do these sort of things. Satan will lie to us that whatever situation we have been praying about for spiritual transformation will never happen. I'm going to say that again. Satan will try to get you to believe that the spiritual transformation you are praying for in someone else's life will never take place. He's trying to get you to quit. His temptation is this. Stop even trying. Oh, how hard it must have been for Paul. Now think about this. If you were to read close enough into his writings, you know what you find out? 
you find out that he named some people that left the ministry left him I wonder how hard that must have been now if you think for a moment Satan didn't try to beat him up over that you've lost your mind because Satan's still doing the same thing today and so all of a sudden we see this part that man Satan's temptation is to say stop just stop your life's only going to get worse the more you do this it's only going to get harder the more you do this. If you'd stop praying, if you stop doing things are going to get better. And if we're not careful, are you ready? If we're not careful, we become overwhelmed. Well, I'm, I'm supposed to have a burden. I agree. But Jesus says... Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Watch this. Light and easy. If you're carrying a burden and it's about to take you down, you need to give something to Jesus. You need to give it to him. Because watch this. I've seen people that have prayed over their spouse and their child and their grandchild to where it actually ran them in the ground. Watch this. I'm not talking about the people they're praying for. I'm talking about the one that's praying. And it got them sick. And they begin to get crushed because they got so overwhelmed with believing. Watch this. That if they stopped praying for even a half a second, then everything was all over. And all of a sudden, man, they begin to carry this weight that he didn't ask for us to carry. Hmm. not careful we become overwhelmed we focus on where our spouse and our child and our grandchild is at the very moment instead of believing that God can do what he says he will do people are tempted to get caught up in the situation at present and if you get caught up in the situation at present my question is this how are you imagining what heaven's going to be like when you're so tore up about all this down here. Either that's good or it's not. Either heaven's going to be great or it's not. And either we're praying, watch this, listen to me church. Either you're praying and giving your spouse, your child, and your grandchild and whoever into his hands or you're trying to carry the weight and it's going to crush you. I look at some of you all and you're on the verge of being crushed because you've done it the wrong way. You think it's you and you alone and that's the only way it's going to get and I promise you that is contrary to scripture. It's him and him alone. I'm not saying don't pray. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't pray. You keep praying. But if it's got you to a place to where you're almost crushed, you're at the wrong place. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about, well, there's some scripture that's going to back all this up. <sighs> Talked about joy this morning in the Sunday school class. Not our joy. Joy. <laughs> joy. Did you realize that, that some people have lost joy? in their Christian walk Are you? Satan is so good and he's good and he gets us so focused on things that we believe are spiritual that it crutches us so much we lose joy so maybe we need to take a playbook out of Psalm 51 of David where he says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation listen to me if you're excited about your salvation now watch real quick just real quick if you're excited about your salvation because you know what he's done for you now watch, take that into your prayer closet and cling to that more than you cling to where somebody's at the moment so I just 
look in the mirror and actually say these words if you can deliver me you can deliver them right it will change the burden you carry and you can go from one almost being crushed in spirit to one who can walk in victory so pastor you'd say this what's the answer <laughs> well for the one that's lost it's going to be this you're crushed in spirit because you sin and you need deliverance you need it only through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of sins the only way to get out of it why you Nobody else can do it because ain't nobody else died for you. Nobody else died for the sins of the world, him and him alone. So today, repent, turn, walk the other direction toward Jesus. Man, what freedom there is in that. Accept what he's already done for you. Now, for the Christian, are you ready? For the Christian, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 9, he's going to say this. Now why? We need to grab hold of these things. And he says this, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Let me say that again. The surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Now why? Real quick, let me intercede here with this. Pentecost Sunday is next Sunday, right? Man, and he said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. Watch this, right? Power from on high. Don't forget where the power comes from. Yes, we need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, but it does not come from ourselves. It can only come from Him. And power that is made, power of our own, is by our own spirit, and we will be crushed in that sense of it so here we get to this Paul makes that distinction and he says the surpassing power belongs to God not to us now watch this we are afflicted in every way now watch come on church listen to me some of y'all man y'all are on the verge of being crushed we are afflicted in every way but not crushed why because we understand where the power comes from Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Watch this. Satan's temptation is to get you to that place. And Paul says, you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Listen to me. Some of y'all's family are making fun of you all for living the Christian life. You are per Listen, you are persecuted, but you are not forsaken. Quit believing the temptation that you are. last words that he would say to him in this sense is this struck down hmm. struck down but not destroyed oh boy how you holding up really uh, listen God don't need any fakeness because God can't work in something that's fake it's when we become real with God that's when we see our answers take place so my question again to you is this. I got a video I want to show. I wasn't going to do it, but I think, I think that's what we're going to do. I may have played this song years and years and years ago. Years ago. But the author's going to be open. Dave and Dustin, they're going to come up and play after it's over with. But the thing about it is this. I want you to hear the words of this song. And then, all the way through it, I want this question to just keep bouncing in your ears. 
How are you holding up? How are you holding up? 